Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to remove and reinstall the rear wheel of a Zero SRF. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do here is remove the rear license plate bracket. Uh, Zero recommends this in the user's manual for adjusting belt tension, which is done here and on the other side. So I think it's going to make it a lot easier for us to get this wheel off. So what we need to do this is a T45 Torx bit. I'm using a half-inch drive ratchet. Uh, and then we also need a half-inch uh, wrench to catch the bolt on the other side. So here we go. Okay, once you do get this guy off, just be careful to make sure you don't lose the parts. You should have a bolt, a washer, and a lock nut for each. Also be careful of the wire attached for the rear license plate lights. Don't want to pull on that too hard, so I'm just going to set it off to the side here. Next step here is to get the rear axle nut off. Um, before I get this thing jacked up, I'm just going to loosen the nut, just so I don't apply too much pressure on the jack and knock it off. So, there we go, it should be good, very loose. Uh, we can go ahead and get the uh, bike up off the ground here so we can work on the wheel a little better. Uh, you cannot use a center lift stand with the SRF, so uh, the, the motor controller is under there and you would uh, damage it if you tried to do that. So you do have to use a swing arm style lift, like this bad boy here I got, uh, little D. So uh, it does, you do need to have, or it helps to have, um, some spin arm, or swing arm spools there. So these are eight millimeter spools. You can order them for 10 bucks, super cheap. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, a lot of these stands also have uh, rubber mounts that you can put straight on the swing arm. So either way will work, I'm sure. But get this up under here like so. All right. Hold the bike as I lift. Piece of cake. Keep the tension off that wire. All right, now I'm just gonna finish loosening up that rear axle nut. There she goes. I'm gonna ease some tension on the uh, belt now. So I'm um, using that same T45 socket. Just gotta make sure you do this on both sides. So I'm nice and loose now. All right, once we've got those loosened, uh, we should be able to push the wheel around. And we'll want to push it forward all the way so that our belt's nice and loose. All right, and it should come right off. I'm just going to pull it up here and let it hang over the side. Next, it's time to pop the, uh, pop the axle out. But while we're doing that, we do need to support the wheel so that we let it down gently. And just be, you need to be careful of uh, the brake caliper here to make sure we're not putting any weird angles or force on it. I'm also going to kind of watch the uh, ABS sensor here. I'm not sure if that's going to be loose when I take this off, so we'll see. But so I'm going to be mindful of those two things. And the axle comes out this side, so I'm going to push it from the other side and support the wheel while pulling it through. Piece of cake. All right, so I'm going to gently let it out of the brake caliper. And it looks like that ABS sensor is popping right off. There we go. I'm take that out too. Okay, I'm just gonna watch the break here. Okay, we're on the ground. 
Just work it out here gently. Boom. So had the new tire put on, got some tread there, it's nice. Uh, let's get this back on the bike. Before we pop the wheel back on, I'm gonna make sure this bushing is in place. It goes right here. It's loose, so when I took the wheel off, it did pop off. So make sure that that's there. I'm sure it's important. So now I'm just gonna make sure everything's ready to go before we pick up the wheel and get it where it needs to be. Um, so the first thing is our belt, chest, uh, belt tension adjustments. What I've done here is we want these to be even. That's gonna be very important. Um, so what I've done is I've set them to their maximum forward position just by barely getting bolt in there. So it is all the way forward on both sides. Should be relatively even. Okay, this is the ABS sensor. That's gonna go in the right side of the wheel hub. And I've also got my left side hardware here. And then of course, the axle. So everything's ready to go where I need it to be. And let's get this bad boy on there. I'm going to start sliding the axle on on the right side. There's two pieces here, so we want to make sure that they lock just like that. Uh, also, this flat side is going to go forward on the swing arm. There's little notches here that we can use later to tell the exact position of the axle, so which is helpful for belt tensioning. So I'm going to start slipping this through here, through the swing arm. I'm going to line up the brake caliper. Okay. And through the brake caliper. I want to make sure the axle is not sticking out on this other side because the next step is to get the ABS sensor on. I think it's going to be easiest to put that on the wheel hub uh, before I fully bring it in. So I'm going to need to lift up the wheel a little bit to do that. Uh, before also, uh, I'm going to make sure the brake calipers are spread as much as I possibly can because I do need to get the rotor in there. So got a lot to juggle here, but here we go. Sliding the rotor carefully into the brake pads. There we go. All right, we're gonna get the ABS sensor up here. Pop that onto the hub. All right, now I'm gonna slide forward. Okay, and axle through. Okay, just jiggle it a little bit. And then I'm going to poke it through the other side. Okay, we are all the way through. So again, this needs to be forward. I need to rotate the axle so that this slides fully into place, just like that. Switching over to the other side here, we see axles poking through right there. Belt's nice and loose, so I can't just lift the belt right over the sprocket like that and then again flat side forward go ahead and pop that on the axle go ahead and hand thread in the axle nut here now we don't want to fully tighten it right now because we do have to adjust belt tension before we do that so axles through where our rear axle nut is just hand tight right now and our belt tension is super loose. So next step is to get that belt tightened up. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is just grab the tire wheel and pull it back until the belt is reasonably under tension. Don't, no need to overdo it. Just get some tension on there. All right, and that will loosen up these guys. And what we're gonna do is just tighten this guy down just with our hands because again, we don't want to overdo it. Okay. And we'll do the same on the right side. So we're hand tight, both sides. 
I now have the belt under a reasonable amount of tension, so it's a little tight when I touch it. Um, so what I want to do here is make sure that the sides are even before I start finally uh, tightening it. So you can see here I'm at the fourth notch on the left side. Let's see where I'm at on the right. Oh yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, a little past the sixth notch. So I want to adjust this so this is also on the fourth notch so that we're close and even on both sides. So I've adjusted both the left and right side. I've got a decent amount of belt tension. Feels close to right. Uh, and then I basically lined it up so that the left side and the right side are on that fifth notch. Um, they should be relatively even, but I can't trust that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to look onto the belt right here, just straight down. And then I'm going to spin the wheel and see how the belt moves. And we can see here it's drifting a little to the right. It's not good obviously, so what that means is we need to tighten up the right side of hair. So take your time with this. I'm just going to do a quarter turn each time. Until that belt position gets where it needs to be. Okay, you can see it's shifted back a little bit, but we could tighten it up a little more, so I'm going to give it another quarter turn right side okay another quarter we're getting close starting to see a little bit of teeth on the sprocket on the right there looking pretty good. The belt tension feels pretty close to how it usually feels, um, but I'm going to get scientific here. Uh, Zero recommends that the belt tension be at least 51 kilograms. It's 51 to about 100, I believe. So they also talk about some app that you, uh, you know, pluck the belt with a wrench and uh, listen to the frequency of it to determine tension. Uh, personally, I prefer to use a cricket like this. So you can order these on Amazon. I'll post a link below. But we're trying to get it up into the 50 plus range here. I'll probably shoot for about 55 right there. So the way this works is we push this all the way down here. We put our finger through this little rubber band strap here. And then this little edge right here comes right up next to the belt. And we push until we hear a click and then we let go. Okay, so my belt tension is, wow, just shy of 60 kilograms. That's pretty good. So uh, obviously if it was looser than that, uh, under 50, I would have uh, done those bolts, turned them a quarter turn each time on both sides to keep it even. Um, again, checked the belt uh, to make sure that it was staying centered on the sprocket and uh, until we got the tension in the right ballpark. So. Looks like we're good. So I'm gonna lower the bike. Just be careful here. Keep our ten, uh, lack of tension there, I should say. All right. Kickstands down. Just grab the bike right here and pull it. Here we go. All right, she's on the ground. Now I'm gonna go ahead and torque down that axle nut. Okay, perfect. So we're just back to our T45 Torx and a half inch uh, crescent wrench here. So you gotta watch this wiring harness here. It goes behind these metal mounting brackets. So careful of that. It looks good. Let's take it for a test drive.